So if you are brand new to eXp, make sure you review that, uh, the four simple steps to uh, success for agent attraction on Brent Gove's website, Brent Gove Resources. Um, if you've been doing agent attraction for a little while, I wanna do some troubleshooting today. And maybe the troubleshooting is just, I don't find time, I don't make time, I haven't done that much agent attraction. Help, that's okay too. Like literally, if that's where you're at too, right? Darcy's raising her hands in the air. Thank you for being honest. I have the same challenge, okay? So I, I think we all struggle with the same challenges in real estate, whether it's- Jesse, you're perfect. Don't Darcy. pull that, you're perfect. <laughs> Hardly. We don't believe Hardly. you. I, I, am, I am usually fairly consistent, but, uh, and Don's pacing around with, he's got lists and lists of paper. I'm excited to see what Don's working on. <laughs> so, uh, you want to see what I'm working on? Yeah. Because I switched to EXP and I haven't updated my seller's guide when I go to my listing presentation. Can you see that? There you go. That's doing my entire listing presentation. I love it. All right, so let's, let's start this off. I just want to check in. So show of hands, and I'm not going to put you on the spot, but does anybody feel like they're having some, you know, they feel like they're getting it, it's clicking, they're starting to have some success with Asian attraction. Let's see, just, I just wanna get a feel for where we're at. All right, Craig, Don, Darcy, Kathy, awesome. And does anyone feel like they're like, you know what, I really, I'm kind of getting stuck someplace. I don't really know where, where I am, where, where, to get, where to get yet. Anyone feel like they're getting stuck? Show of hands. I'm kind of both. Both, awesome. All right, so let's, so let's just jump right in then. So, so this is gonna be a more interactive call than normal. It could turn into a training, but I really wanna have each of you guys if, as transparently as you feel comfortable, you want to do things one-on-one, -on -one, call me later. If you're fine sharing in a group, something that you share, I guarantee, will be a challenge someone else has had and will help someone else too. There's no way something you're experiencing, you are alone in that. So, so Darcy, let's start. You were, you were kind of both. What do you mean by kind of both? Okay, so, I mean, I've had some people sign up under me. Mm -hmm. I'm some decent people, and I have some more people that I'm talking to, but I feel like it is incidental which i'm cool with completely um but i would like to take a more active role because i'm like if i'm doing this incidentally then if i am actually trying it will probably go a lot better and a lot smoother um but it's it's hard to figure that out yeah so um has anyone else felt like that in terms of had some things have some people sign up just kind of incidentally because I was looking at my list of, uh, you know, where people have come from. I made a little spreadsheet to see the people I've sponsored, where they've come from, uh, sources, whether it was outbound. I kind of divided into outbound versus inbound. Same thing I look at in, when you have leads, right? If you guys have seller leads or buyer leads, were they outbound leads that you generated or inbound leads where, I mean, I had a, a past client call me to list his condo the other day. That's an inbound. You have someone who reaches out to you and says, hey, talk to me about EXP. That's an inbound there are some things you can do strategically to increase the amount of inbound leads, right? Like Susan, I don't know if anybody saw it. Susan's on the call, just did a, uh, a Facebook live. She does it 10 a.m. every Thursday morning. That is something she's started doing called for the love of real estate. She's doing that in order to generate more inbound leads, right? But just like any sort of marketing system we're going to run, that it takes some time to, to get for that to get traction. And it's also something that it's really hard to calculate that Darcy. That's why you're feeling like, they're incidental. It's, it's not, is it scalable? I mean, it's not a one-to-one -one trackable thing. On the opposite side, what is scalable and trackable, especially when you're starting, is the outbound, right? Where you're actually reaching out to someone. So where I would say for that one is, do you have your list of people that, let's start there. Do you have your list of people that you could reach out to? And do you, on a regular basis, go down that list and, and reach out to them? Okay. She's shaking her head no for those of you who can't see it. You can't see it. I appreciate the honesty. That is the missing piece. If you want to get systematic, it's just like working buyers and sellers, which I know you're very good with. So you probably have your, well, maybe, I don't know. The, you guys know this expression, the way you are in one thing is the way you are in everything. So if there's something going on with agent attraction, it's probably the same way with your buyer and seller prospecting. I don't know. Maybe it's not. And that, that's why I wanted to have this call and just like, be, just be honest about it. If it's not the same, there might be something holding you back on the agent attraction side. But if it is the same, then maybe it's, maybe it's a system or a process or accountability you need on, on all fronts. And it's not talking about hours of time. It could just be as simple as take two people on the list and call them each day. It becomes a habit then versus something that you have to work around. Does that make sense, Darcy? 
It makes complete sense and you're absolutely right. Um, thank you for diagnosing all of my problems in my business in about 30 seconds. And besides that, um, it, no, I think you hit it on the head because, you know, yesterday my coach <laughs> gave me the task of within the, within the next 60 days, I have to have four new agents on board. And um, I, I think by doing that, I will get a lot of these systems more in place and it won't be as chaotic. So right. yes, look at that. It all comes together. Thank you. You're well, yeah. So, so those of you who have teams, who are team leaders here, some of you guys are, do you, do you run any sort of lead funnels? Be, even before you were with EXP, have you run a lead funnel to get people to call for your team? Right? Craig's nodding his head yes. And then you have, so then you have people to call, right? Craig? Correct. So that's, and then do you schedule time? I mean, Craig's a pretty systematic guy when, when he's, when he's working, when he's not at the river, do you schedule time <laughs> Craig, to, to just call those blocks of people? Do they pop up on your calendar? How do you organize yourself? Yeah, exactly. It's time blocked. Tell me more. I mean, just, just like you said, just like buyers and sellers, I just time block it out for agent recruiting. Yep. So, so Darcy, if your coach says recruit four people for your team, the only difference with agent attraction now versus recruiting for your team is every single agent on the planet, at least the countries we're in so far, but really every agent on the planet becomes someone you could potentially talk to to have a conversation about joining the XP. Right. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, you, absolutely. Your list is just almost, I mean, not infinite, but it's 1.2 million realtors, which is pretty darn long, is the potential list that you can Might talk take to. a little while to call. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so let's, so let's keep going with Darcy for a minute. If you had time on your schedule and you had a list of people to call, cause you said you had your list, what else would stop you from picking up the phone? Are you worried about what they might think? Are you worried about, are you, is it not worth your time? Is there anything, can you put your finger on anything else that could be going on? I think it varies per person, but oftentimes, um, it comes back to exactly what to say. And I know I've heard it several times, um, but there's nothing like hearing it again. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so let's dive into this. So she's heard it a bunch of times. How many times have you said it out loud? Not nearly as many times as I've heard it. <laughs> so everyone's different here, guys. I don't know about you, but me, I'm a huge fan of role playing when working with buyers and sellers. I used to role play my scripts for buyers and sellers on a daily basis, 20 minutes a day, every day. Did anyone else show hands? Anyone else ever role play any scripts for buyers and sellers? Okay. All of us. And how many of you have role played agent attraction scripts? Oh, no. None of us. I actually it's amazing. The exact thing that created success for us in our business with buyers and sellers is now the thing that if you're looking for a missing piece, Darcy, because that repetition, that muscle memory builds confidence, right? And I told, I told uh, Ali's uh, group this morning, you don't have to be a professional recruiter. I mean, everyone who's on this call, clearly you're interested in agent attraction, so the word recruiter is probably okay with you. But for most agents at EXP, I always talk about, you don't need to be a recruiter. You're a professional inviter. That's all you're doing. And so even if your script is super simple, which is like, hey, I'm obsessed with this webinar. Um, I'd love to watch with you and just get your opinion. If you don't say that on the phone, out loud in a role play setting or to the mirror or to someone else a bunch of times when it comes up in real life, it's really hard to say it to someone if you haven't practiced it. Does that make sense guys? Mm -hmm. I, yeah. think for, I think for me, I go through my list and I see these different names and I, I don't know, I haven't, I just see them as, as all being different. And I'm, and I, I guess I, I doubt, I have doubt that, um, you know, whatever script I had in mind is going to be the right fit for that person at that time, you know, and it's like, I feel like I need to almost, you know, tailor a plan to every specific person. And I don't want them to, you know, think of me as a schmuck. If I just call somebody I barely know and say, Hey, I'm obsessed with this webinar. Like that's, that's just not me. You know what I They're mean? They're going to find out you're a schmuck eventually. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But if it's somebody I know well, and like I'm friends with, like, sure, I can just call them some. I am obsessed with this webinar. Let's watch it. Like that would work for me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, I don't know. 
It's, okay. So, but it, it, it creates delay. That's the problem. I'm just delaying. So, so there was two things you said there. And by the way, guys, I really appreciate you sharing this stuff because I guarantee you are not the only person that experiences this, Michael. I, I guarantee you, okay? There's two different things here. One, you said you feel like that script isn't what you would say. Totally. I, I agree. That's why there really is no one script that works here. I always keep recommending and hope from that any other video you guys watch, they always say, put it in your own words, like make it your own. I just give out scripts. Same thing I do when I'm training, you know, if you're training a buyer's agents, you want to hit, take a script as a starting point, but the more you can internalize it and figure out the concepts of it and put it in your own words, the best it's going to go. So, so the general concepts of what you're internalizing, what to say is, Hey, this thing's pretty cool. Will you give me your feedback? What, however that comes out, whatever you're saying, it's give a compliment that, you know, I'd really love to get your feedback on this thing. That's really as simple as you can boil it down to. And your script could be that short. But I think you said something else that this plays for me, like this resonates with me. Some of you guys who are super high Ds, this might not register on your radar at all, but I'm a high I and a high D. I actually care what people think about me. It's, I do, I'll admit it, like I try not to, right? But it is a factor. Those of you who are high Ds, you don't notice other people, period. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but no, but you, you It know, feels you that way though. Right, but you know, you have a path, you know where you're going. So for any high eyes, which a lot of salespeople are high eyes, you like people and you want them to like you. I read a, I read a post, a response on a, uh, on a Facebook message this morning. Uh, it was one of our mutual friends from Club Wealth who posted something and this person actually likes EXP. They're not with EXP, but they, 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 ha they like EXP. So that was funny. I know because, exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they actually Is that like those, you. those, the five, yeah, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And, and one of the things that things to avoid was, uh, was, you know, EXP agents, but I get why, because there are a lot of EXP agents out there that it's really funny. There's kind of a split. Hey, Mike Bjorkman from vacations joining us. What's up, What's up? We're, we're just troubleshooting. We're troubleshooting Asian attraction today. So, oh my goodness. Uh, my favorite. I know. So, so, so there's like, so there's like a split when you talk to agents, you will still talk to some agents, who really haven't heard of EXP and don't know much about it. It kind of blows my mind when that happens, but show of hands, how many of you guys have talked to someone who just really hasn't even heard of EXP or doesn't know much about it? There's a lot of people out there, okay? So we come with this preconceived notion. We come with this idea that they've been harassed and hit up by all these people and they're not even open to it. And you pick up the phone and you start talking, they're like, I don't really know much about it. Like I talked to a guy yesterday, Mike, you talked to him also. That, that, that broker owner that, that we both talked to yesterday, how, how much did he know about eXp? Oh, he just muted himself out. He's talking to someone else. Anyway, he really didn't know much at all. This guy is like a, a big industry leader. He's been involved in the industry for years. And I would have assumed he'd know all about eXp. And was, you know, but I had a call with him about something else. So it came up. He, doesn't, he hasn't paid much attention to it at all. He just doesn't know about it. So there's no preconceived notion there. So that's number one. Number two, though, there are the people who have talked to other people about eXp. And I believe one of the big hangups for a lot of us for agent attraction is you don't want to be yet another person to just call them and annoy them. And they feel like it's very transparent that you are only out for yourself and not looking out for them. Does that make sense, guys? So if you have that thought, as I say it, please, like, I, I get this thought in my head. I do. The way I reframe it for myself is... Yes, there is something good for me if they join the company, but I truly believe it's also as impactful, if not more impactful for them, because they're not with this company yet. If you haven't had the moment yet with someone that you brought to this company who looks at you and suddenly goes, wow, like this is too good to be true. Is this really like, like this really is, this is, this is a game changer. When you see someone have that moment, that's why I keep reaching out to people and talking to them. Does that make sense, guys? So do you run the risk of having someone feel like, yeah, you're just reaching out? Yeah, it's possible. But if you're really coming at, in, if you're in rapport with people and you're genuinely reaching out to them from a, from a place of contribution, they're going to get that. It's going to cross with authentic. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that helps you in the moment, Michael, where you're thinking, I don't want to come across as a schmuck. I don't want to be the, I think one of the, one of the comments was uh, the Jehovah's Witness of, of of uh, ESP, I'm like, I don't know much about Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> I'm not religious, but I was like, I, I was dying. Would you say, Mike? I was dying when I saw that this morning. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what's so you, you're here? So, what's your reframe? Because Mike is a high D, but he's also a high I. 
like you like people and you don't want to come across as being like you don't want to come across as a pushy jerk right i i'm just super transparent and authentic and you know the the start of exp is you have to fall in love and really truly know in your heart of hearts it's the best company and then when i tell people you know my line i just say listen you know has anybody really truly sat you down and showed you the model like really truly and i always back it up with like really and then i say no and i say you know I respect you. I respect your business. I know you're business minded. I know you're open minded. And, you know, in the quick, short two years, it just gets better and better. And I truly believe it's my humanly duty to share this with other people I care about. And I care about you, you know, and if I don't know them very well, I just say, I really do respect your business. And I don't, I, you know, sometimes I can't even sleep at night. I'm so excited and I want to tell people about it. And if you're going to pop into my mind, I'm going to call you and tell you about it. And that's it. So, you know, and they're like, that's really cool. And I appreciate that. Yeah. I recruited this girl last week that's been in the business for 30 years alongside of me, one of my biggest competitors in the world. And I straight out told her that I did a zoom with her. She's leaving Remax and coming over this week. And it's just one of those people you never would have thought. And I just, I just, I just told her, it's kind of like when I called Krista the other day, I said, I you came across my mind. And usually when that happens, somebody needs me. You know, and then I followed up with that other girl. I said, look, you've been weighing on my heart heavy this week and I have to follow up with you. And she's like, okay, send me a couple more videos on this, that, and the other, and I did. And it's, it's That's a good, good. line. But if you, you really away. truly believe it's your humanly duty to tell people and share it with people you care about, I mean, it's real. Like, I get teary-eyed when I see good agents not with us. That, so, Michael Henry? in terms of developing that sense of conviction, can you see how that would be when you, when you have those moments of like, oh, I don't know, should I reach out? If you truly, like, if you truly believe like th there's something wrong if they're not with this company, when you feel that confidently in it, it makes it a lot easier to reach, to reach out, right? Yeah. yeah. I just literally had a conversation with, with, with my team and our, our friend from, from Keller Williams came over and had, had lunch with us and she's kind of approaching retirement, um, but, but she, we were talking about some people who just left her office to go to HomeSmart. And I just, I was saying that very thing, like if they're going to HomeSmart, then they just, they just obviously just didn't take a close enough look at, at EXP. I mean, there, there's just no reason. I, I, I do believe 100%, like Mike says in my heart, that, that this is the best place for them to be for most people. Um, if they're a producing agent with a pulse, like it probably makes more sense to be here with us. You know. Well, reverse. I, someone told me this. I don't know who told me whether it was Mike or Jesse, but it it, it it was kind of a profound. It really opened my eyes. And they said, if you're nervous about talking to somebody, or you're nervous about that you that you know you don't feel like you can you have value, it's because you're coming from a, a position of self centeredness. And I was like, what? I mean, and. It, when I say self-centered is that you're worried more about how you're, if you're going to get um, hung up on or declined or they're not going to like you as opposed to coming from a position of health. And, and someone explained it to me like this, and I don't know who told me this. They said, imagine that you're standing at a target at a store in the line and you had a 20% off coupon. And, person in front of you is buying that exact same product, but you're not going to use that coupon. And you would just say, you might just say, hey, you know, excuse me, I see you're buying this product. I just happen to have a 20% coupon in, in that, here it goes, you can have it. And like that, that coupon, it's that ticket. And so when I talk to people, I'm not worried about what they're going to say. Like from Mike, Mike says, look, I'm so excited. I packed the shares. This is my human duty to share an EXP model because it is the game changer for the real estate agent. There's nobody in our industry that offers an agent retirement packages, stock, rev share, the online process, the, the cloud-based stuff. We have a duty. I have a duty to share the good news. I have the duty to sell the religion, the gospel of EXP. So, so, let, so let's jump right there. I, and I love that, Don. I do love that. I don't know who told you that, but I do love it. Um, the, what I saw in this post this morning, this Facebook post, if you remember, was the, to to avoid exp agents asking you about your retirement plan right do you guys remember that and it totally cracked me up because that is a line that a lot of people use but here's the thing 
a lot of people, they might not either care about their retirement thing because they can't think that far ahead. They can, they see through it. They don't think it's, they don't believe that it's really going to work, that it's really going to set them up for retirement. So whatever it is, it doesn't come across as authentic, right? That's why if you, from the way Mike's describing Mike's script comes across really authentic, the way Don's talking about it comes across really authentic. So for you, Michael Henry, you, you're right. You got to figure out what comes across as authentic for you to share your story more than telling them about revenue share, more than telling them about whatever. Have we talked about stories on these calls ever? Sharing your story? A little bit, but not much. Okay, so that this might be a good transition for this part, and we'll do some more troubleshooting. Um, you wanna be able to explain, this is another way to open a conversation. You wanna be able to explain your EXP story in a minute or less to a place that, if it can bring you to tears, even better, okay? Because if, if it can bring you to tears, it can bring someone else to tears. And I'm talking about, if, that, if it doesn't bring you to tears, that's okay. But we want to connect at an emotional level as to what it was and what this really does for you. And that's what's going to spark curiosity in someone else, right? Like, for example, um, you know, I took a year off and I lived in Thailand from 2013 to 2014. And when I came back, I, we started our family. I had one kid and we had a second kid. And I was just super stressed in terms of running my real estate team and business. And like, it was up and down and stressful and sideways. And I kept just looking and searching for something to give me back that sense of, of, uh, of freedom I had when I was in Thailand and really give me some time back to spend with my kids. Like I was just, I didn't want to be on a, on a hamster wheel going in circles over and over and over again, and miss out on my entire kids' lives as they grew up. So when someone turned me on to EXP, my mind was blown. Like what I saw in this model is what allowed me to get that sense of freedom back. That's what it did for me. Right? Would you be open to checking out a webinar so you could see if that's something that was like would impact your life? Right? That's one version of a story you could tell, and I wouldn't use that for anyone. But if I'm talking to someone who has kids that I know like me, and you tell that story, it would be hard for them to not want to at least be interested and curious. Does that make sense, guys? Everybody has a story that makes sense. Everybody has their own pain. Everybody has their own misery, and it's very real. And one of the things that I do is I share stories like I share golden story all the time the dude was down and out bankrupt like miserable in life didn't want to be in real estate anymore and within 12 months retires like that's a pretty pretty impactful story right and and it just takes one or two people to get you that way right like it's it's crazy to where like this morning my wife goes hey listen you know, we're packing up the motorhome because this beach is full and there's no more spots. She goes, do you think you can go when we get home, book another place so we can go back out again? And, you know, a couple of years ago, I'd be nervous about that because it's going to cost three grand a week. You know, this morning, I look at my bank account, grand in there the next day that I didn't really do anything for. And I'm like, yeah, I'll go for another week. Fuck it. Let's go. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, it, it's really nice. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's a big deal. And what's funny, People that are on the, are listening in the future on the podcast, maybe you're newer to EXP. Maybe you don't have, you know, five, 10 grand rolling in, but consider, you know, going home to your spouse and saying, and I, and I talk about this a lot and saying, look, I really worked hard today, but stop BSing yourself, right? Like, you, you know, you didn't work hard today. Real estate agents don't work hard. Unless you have 30 escrows and no assistance, you don't do shit, right? So the reality is, is sometimes working hard is where you get those butterflies in your tummy and, you know, you call your chicken list. People that you're scared to death to call that, that are the most business-minded, the most closest to joining our company. And when you call 10, 20 of those people and you hire one or two a week, that's working because now you're working for your future. You're working for your retirement plan that everybody's making fun of us about and you know, I, I watched this. I didn't, I didn't watch the stock until I saw it on Facebook, but I had 200 grand last week in stock. And, and do you guys know it went to 400 grand in a week? Like, holy fuck, that's real. So, I mean, that's a, that's a really big difference when you're, when your retirement account doubles and they can make fun of us all they want, because I didn't have that. And, and Did your 200 went to 400? Yep, talk to me. What? The stock doubled last week. Yeah, the stock doubled. I can hear you, Don. The stock doubled last week, basically. Yeah, I know. I, I, I look, I've only been with the company really effectively five months, and I got 20000 in the stock. I was like, holy crap. <laughs> you guys, that, that, this makes me cry. I mean, really. 
uh, you guys have no idea. Um, um, I went through a really bad divorce back years ago. And I mean, I, it was like the peak. I, I paid child support. I paid alimony. I have, I didn't get anything. I didn't have any retirement. I'm in a good marriage now, but everything is 50, 50. We don't have, I don't have any retirement at all. I mean, part of the, being, the reason I'm doing this is really to build a retirement. My daughter just got accepted to college of Idaho this week. I got to figure out this out. And, um, this is cool. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be emotional, but that's cool. That's really, I mean, that's like real to me. I mean, it's like, it's real. And I mean, everything at Keller Williams, I, I tried to do, I thought I was building something and I, and it was so frustrating that it didn't come to pass. And I really think that I have an opportunity here. You know, I believe I have an opportunity here. You, you do. And the, and you, you already are sharing it. The more you share that, individually one-on-one -on -one with people in an authentic way like that's I mean that's the magic Susan that really is what you just shared like could everyone feel that like that's real like this is real so you know when I got my first um my very first rev share check it was like 105 dollars and you know I said to my other friends in the business that are not with us is hey guys my gas this week is completely free and they said, what? And I was like, yeah, I don't have to pay anything for gas. Now, last, the next one was like 600 bucks. I was like this gas this month is completely free. So whether <laughs> it's on Susan's level of retirement, which is awesome, but not everybody can think that far, right? Not everybody can conceptualize that, but they can conceptualize what a gas tank is worth. You can bring it down to that. Yeah. Our house payment or their car. Payment. Exactly. Yeah. And I found someone last night, literally, like, you know, uh, oh, David Kurz, he was here. That's who I was talking to for the Zeeland and David in Miami. He, him and his wife stopped by on their trip and we were sitting around the campfire. And I said, dude, look, this is how real this is. My house payment, which is $5,200, paid. We have four car leases, paid. All the insurance, paid. All our utilities, paid. Everything that I have to pay for in life is paid. So now when I sell a house, that's fun money. Now when my property management company is growing and expanding, we just bought a beach house to do that, paid. Like everything's paid. So waking up in the morning with everything paid is a really big deal. When you say, and I like how Gene Frederick says, hey, would three grand a month change your life? Go text six agents. Like that's real. That's most people's house payment or most people's, college tuition for their children or whatever it is. And that's a big deal. So if you haven't convinced yourself, you know, it's going to be hard. But <clears throat> even if you don't have that kind of money coming in, look around, we're all doing it. And it's very real. Like Jesse said, when he started, if you guys could get me to 10 grand a month, I'm going to retire. I don't care. That's all I care about. And I'm like, fuck, Jesse, please don't. And now where are you at, Jesse? You're at almost 20 grand, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, last month, last month was 14, but it's still, it's, this month's going to be higher. Yeah, I'm at 14. It's only two days in or whatever. <laughs> so good. So, yeah, I think, I think self-limiting beliefs can be crushed with storytelling, authenticity, and, you know, motivational things like what we're doing right now, helping out our team. And, and uh, oh, that's another thing we were talking about last night. For those of you on this call, your team is light years ahead of every other team. And most people don't have support at this company. And we all have this family and these unbreakable bonds. Like, we got to use the crap out of it, you know? It's a really big deal. So keep that in mind, too, when we're, you know, trying to help each other out and grow this thing. So, Sorry. No, I love it. I, I was going to throw out one more thing back to, and we'll jump in if anyone's got some troubleshooting stuff where we can, people they talk to, any conversations they have. I'd love to hear some conversations you guys have had with people and see where that, but let's, let's wrap up on the thought of if you're, you know, you're troubleshooting, okay, picking up the phone. I found this years ago when calling sellers that the hardest phone, if you're going to prospect for an hour, two hours, however long it is, and you've been calling, what's the hardest phone call to make? That Ali's on mute, but she put up her finger, right? You guys agree? It's the first one. That's it. 
it, right? So if you have a list, and I like that Mike you know, talks about the chicken list. If you can pick up the phone and call the chicken list, go for it. But if you've got someone that you know and love, or if that's, you're like, you know what? I don't want to call someone I know and love because I'm worried about being judged. Call someone in the middle. Some that you don't care what they think about you at all, right? Have a list of people that you could literally pick up the phone and call someone just to, just to shake it off, right? Or call someone on the screen here. Take a screenshot. Find out who these people are. Call me and do a role play call. And then pick up the phone and call someone else. Go ahead, Michael. So I, uh, in the past week, I started watching the 90-minute video, Rob Flick's 90-minute video. And I've kind of zeroed into about the midway point through like the two-thirds section of that video and he's talking about um he's talking a lot about this stuff and what what he says and uh but his mindset is funny he's the only person i've heard talk about like you know you're gonna you're gonna say no just say no just say no just just say no like, he, like he's expecting to say no and oh he talks about practicing on the people that like you don't even care about right. like just just start calling these people that you don't even care about who they, they don't know who they are you don't know what they're, they're gonna think but just start calling them and calling them calling them. expect them all to say no and, um, you know, it, 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 I've, I've got to watch it again, but the more, the more I watch it, the, the more I'm taken away from it. And I think that that mindset is going to help me a little bit. I've been out of commission for a couple of days, but looking forward to uh, putting that, that mentality to work. So that was the Rob Flick 90 minute uh, webinar or tra training. If you yeah, go, I'll, put a, I'll put a link in the chat box for it. It's, yeah. it's one of my favorites. It's a, uh, let's see here, Rob Flick 90 minute training. Here we go. It's in the chat box for anyone, for Kathy and anyone else wants to watch it. Most of you have seen that one. And the, a lot of it is mindset, a lot of it's, but the way he talks about EXP is useful and there are some good scripts like Michael's talking about in the middle. What I find is really effective for me is I will watch a little bit of an EXP video and then hang up and start calling agents. I don't know if it does it for you, but I, I, I stumbled upon that because I used to watch EXP videos late at night sitting in my kids' rooms while they were falling asleep or just that was, I was just obsessively watching them over and over. And then 11 o'clock at night, I want to reach out and talk to agents. So I jump on Facebook and I start messaging people and responding to things and doing it that way. But it's better to get that intensity and energy coming out. It's like, it's like your warm up routine. My warm up routine is watch part of an EXP webinar and then something one that I like at the moment. And then 20 minutes, 10 minutes, 15, whatever. And then I'll immediately just the discipline, hang on the phone and just dial my first number. And then it just gets you into action. Once you dial that first number, if you have a list in front of you, you'll keep going down the list. Craig, do you have any tips? I saw you, I don't know if you're coming up with you there. Do you have any tips or things you do when you start prospecting or have you done this for so long you just do it without thinking? Yeah, I mean, I, that, that sounds bad to say. I, it, doesn't, it doesn't bother me. I just, I just call. Like, <laughs> what's the worst they're going to tell you? Like, and I don't, I don't really pitch it so much as like, like if, if I were to call an agent, the, the, the script is no different for me recruiting someone to my team or the brokerage. I don't really even talk about any of that stuff. I just want to meet with them and just have a conversation. It's almost like a coaching call. How's business? What's going on? What's your challenge? What's your struggles? And I will, I'll pick out that information and then I will deliver up to them what, you know, what they're looking for in the presentation or the, the meet when we get together. Yep. And that makes it an easier call to make in some ways because you're just calling and asking them, how's the business going? And looking yeah. for ways you can help them. So Craig, you're a big fish in a small pond. Would you have the same approach if you were a small fish in a big pond going for bigger fish? I don't know. I think, I, I, was it, who was it? Was it Mike or Jesse who was talking about mindset? I think it's just a mindset. I don't think it has anything to do with what size of fish you are. It's what do you have to offer? You know, is this opportunity that we have greater than what they currently have? It doesn't matter where you're at in the business. That's, That's the fair. way I see it. Completely fair. I, I do like that. I love that, Craig. And I don't know, and I don't know, I'm, I'm new to this, so I don't know everyone's name, but whoever, you know, brought in Brent Gove, I, my understanding is she wasn't a big fish at all, right? She, Sheila Fergeron, yeah. No, I mean, she, 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 ran, she ran a small team, and she, I mean, she, was, she was successful in the business, but no, she wasn't the but big But it's fair team. to say she was a small fish and Brent was a big one, right? Yes. And absolutely. she didn't care. Absolutely. So it's, just, it's the same thing. Yeah, you hear Sheila talk about it. And how, how many of you guys have heard Sheila talk about that? Right? She calls it her, what, like her 90, she calls it her 90 seconds of, uh, 90 seconds of uh, fear, 30 seconds of fear, whatever she calls it. She basically just like pick up the phone and call. And like, that's what she was doing, calling big fish. And she's like, hey, 
I don't know if you remember me. I met you at a conference a few years ago. You were up on stage. You did such a fantastic job of speaking. You were, you were just the energy you brought. You were amazing. I just, I have something. I'm just checking it out. I would love for you to check it out and take a look and give me your feedback. That's literally all she said. Jesse, you call someone like that and they don't answer the phone. Are you leaving a voicemail? Good question. So I leave, fish don't answer, you know? I don't leave voicemails for anybody. <laughs> I always text. And I'm definitely not texting about EXP. I'm yeah. texting about getting into, I'm texting about them and I want to get into relationships. So I, I used to ask David Golden about this all the time when I first joined EXP. And him and I have very similar approaches we developed. I'm sure there are people who text about EXP and maybe it works for them. I never do. Because I'm, I'm only texting people that I actually know. Like if you're texting a big fish that you have no relationship with, you're going to, you're going to want to, pique their interest, get their curiosity, and try to get them on the phone first, right? So if you want to do the big fish example, what would I text? Let's see, if I was calling someone who is a national speaker, do I know this person or do I not know them? You know of each other. I know of them. Um, so Ter I Tony Robbins, you know. I, I pro well, if I, if I say I knew Tony Robbins a little bit, I mean, I, pro I send the same text to almost everybody because I'm looking for an op opportunity to get in a conversation. Uh, I would probably text, hey, long time, no talk. I leave a blank line. I say, how's life? Question mark. Leave a blank line below that. How's business? Question mark. Or how's biz? Question mark. I send that message out on Facebook all the time. Because right? that's when, it, when it's like 11 o'clock at night and I'm prospecting. I got nothing else going on. That seems to open up a lot of conversations. Because that will, as you start talking. So let me, let me pull up this, uh, the last text message I sent to this guy. Let's see here. Here we go. We were texting. Uh, let's see here. Uh, there we go. Hi, so-and-so. Long time, no talk. Saw you were on this blank Facebook post today. I zoomed in on a pic and thought, hey, I know that guy. How are things in your world? How's your brokerage doing? That's literally all I said to open a conversation. And he's, in my mind, he's a bigger fish than me. I don't know, right? Like, and he said, hey, it's been a long time. I'm doing well. After 10 years, blah, blah, blah. We texted back and forth a few times. And he said, hey, you know, if you're ever in my city, let's catch up. And he's like, well, I don't know when I'll be in your city next, but happy to jump on Zoom next week. Let's have a chat. We jumped on Zoom. Like that was it. It was, you're just looking for ways to open. So if you're reaching out to a big fish, how's life? How's biz? If you're on the same level as them, or you could just say, hey, you know, you could say, Hey, I, uh, you know, I wanted to get your opinion. You know, I've always, Hey, I, I, I've always respected you. I want to get your opinion on something. Can we jump on zoom for a few minutes? Or can we jump on the phone for a few minutes? You could be straightforward and asking that. It depends on what your context is. Anyone else got, got something they would text to, what would you guys send out? Nothing, you so one I thing, did. one thing that a, a bunch of us that have worked here for the last 15 years, we kind of check in with each other once in a while and we're like, Hey, how's, what's your happiness level? I know that sounds really whatever, but really hippie, but you know, there's like 20 or 30 of us that are on that little chat and we check in with each other every once in a while, especially if we see something on Facebook, where I'm like, well, Hey, what's your happiness level? You know? And, and same thing, how's biz? And I had a, a reply from somebody today. She says, she says, oh man, I hate to say it, but I'm at a three and business sucks. I'm like, hey, let's get together. So we're getting together today at three o'clock. But it was just that simple. I love you know? it. And, and when you go into that meeting, I don't know what you guys do, but for me, I, I am thinking, I, I hope I can bring this to EXP, but I don't always, it doesn't always have to go there, right? Like if someone, yeah. if it's literally like, if you're in a relationship, like, I always want to go, okay, just be transparent. That's why I'd like to get them on the phone and be transparent. But if you're going to catch up and it has nothing to do with EXP, let's go, let it go and we'll bring it up next time. Like, mm -hmm. there are times where if, it's, if you're a genuine friend and they're going to do something, of course, just talk to them about what they're going through in their life. But in general, if it's a business conversation, I would say nine times out of 10, all roads lead back to EXP. That's why, like Craig was saying, you have to understand the model well enough to know what's going on in their world connects back to what they're going through. Yep. Like, do you guys agree with that? Nine times out of 10, it naturally leads back to EXP. And sometimes it leads back to EXP like this. You're just gonna ask them questions about themselves. Once you get them on the phone, you're gonna ask them questions about themselves. How are they doing? At some point, they're gonna say, how are you? They're gonna ask, right? Or they may even ask, hey, how are things going with EXP? If they know you're with EXP. They might say, how are you? You say, Fantastic. I actually switched my company over to, 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 uh, to EXP or switched my workers to EXP a little while back. Probably best decision I ever made. And see if they bite. 
see what they say. Most people are going to be like, tell me, right, tell me more. So this guy I talked to yesterday, the broker owner, you know, he's asked me what I'm going on. I said, he said, how's your brokerage? I said, oh, I actually shut my brokerage down about a year ago. I switched over to EXP. He's like, oh, how's that going for you? Tell me about it. That was it. And we started talking about it. Most people you know will ask you. Those yeah, I, re I remember yeah. one time I was on a Zoom call and um, this is when I first joined EXP. So I didn't really know much about it, but there was probably like five or six people on there. And uh, we were just talking. I was like, yeah, I just joined EXP. And everyone was just minding their own business. I was like, I just don't understand why anyone wouldn't want to join. And everyone looked and said, what do you mean? And like, that's all I had to say. And I sent over the video and everything and that's all I had to do. So I think, I think we overthink it too much. People feel that just like if you walk into the mall and like you're going to American Eagle and you know, you want to get jeans, but you have that employee that walks right up to you and you're like, just go away. You know, like no one wants to be bothered, but so I think it's, it's good to approach it in a different way. Love it. I love it, Allie. All right, a few more minutes to stop the hour. Have you had any specific conversations with people where, you, where we can troubleshoot? Where you're like, I said this, and I don't think I should have said that, and I got stuck, or I didn't know what to say. Anyone got any specific conversations you want to dive into? Go ahead, Kathy. I, I had a conversation um, with one of the owners of my last company, and she said, well, you know, she says, it sounds good to me, but if I come over, how am I going to make everybody else come over? Because I don't want to, she says, I, I don't want to leave my company. And I said, you're not leaving your company. You're bringing your company with you. And um, so I'll be talking with her again, probably early next week. And I just am trying to figure out, without being too salesy about how, what, why we're bringing over the whole company, I, you know, without saying it's all about money, you know, because it's really not all about money. It's all about knowledge and power and you know, you get all your questions answered without having to wait and not bother her. For me, my thing for her was, this is going to be freedom for you. You're going to make money and you're going to have freedom. You're not going to have as many demands. Well, 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 she just said, I get it for me, but how do I get it? She's worried about now the agents at her company, right? Right. So you'd have to look at, first of all, there are some numbers to look at in terms of what is the structure of her current company what are her splits what does it look like right well, she's are the owner she's one of three owners C correct but the agents at her company are oh. the because whenever i look at someone coming to exp like you said it's not about the numbers but it, it is about establishing value right price is only an issue in the absence of value however okay. if you have someone moving from a company where their splits are 70 30 uncapped and they're moving to exp at 80 20 with a 16k cap you have to illustrate a lot less value because they're already just on the splits alone. They're already making more money. Does that make sense? But if you're coming from someone who has been at a flat fee company where they pay a couple hundred bucks a transaction, and now they're moving to a company where they go to an 80, 20 split with a $16,000 cap, and they're paying more to their brokerage without, obviously you can offset it through revenue share and stock and other things, but just at a service level, you have to illustrate other value and connect with them. Does that make sense? So I'd like to know on a brokerage level for sure, you'd want to know what the structure of her brokerage is with her agents. So they're, they're a flat fee company, it's $500, it's tiered, and then up to, I think, $1,100 per transaction, depending on what the sales price is. Can I and jump in on this, Jesse? Yeah, please. So, I'm sorry, your name's Kat Kathy. Are you, have you ever been a broker owner of a company? No. So I, th I go by red, green, blue. You're like, what's that mean? And if you read that book, it's called A Building an Empire. I'm sorry, what's it called? So building an empire. Okay. You, if it's a if it's a red, green, blue, the green individual that you're recruiting somebody that has maybe way less than your what you've experienced in your production. So if you're a team leader and you've been in the business for twenty one year, one year new agent, it's easy for you to recruit them. You they look up to you. You have more knowledge than they do. If somebody's on the same level as you. They're now what's called a blue. So a green one, you can recruit easy. A blue one is like, they're on the same level to you. They may respect you. They may look up to you. But when they're that size of a level, they're a red to you. You need to rely on somebody like Mike Bjorkman, who has owned a big brokerage, to come in and talk brokerage lingo to them. I'm a broker, and I own a REMAX franchise. 
I very, I'm very good with numbers. You need somebody that is in your, um, a, you know, that is your mentor uh, to help you with that conversation. That's a conversation that's going to be very difficult. So I would call that a red in my book. I'm like, er, red. I'm going to bring in the big guns. I have a big broker that I've been trying to recruit and she's, you know, the number one broker for years and years and years in our area. And, and it's, it's, it's not, I have to bring in someone bigger than me to recruit her. It has to be someone who has a higher level of production. I've done more to show them the value of why it is that they joined as a broker. Because I, I Craig and I, Craig, and I, I recruited Craig, but I needed to bring in more people than just myself to get Craig to come over. To be honest, with you, I had Mike Bjorkman talk to him, Jesse talk to him, Brent Gove talk to him. I mean, you know, Craig's on the call because, you know, him and I are basically on the same level. And, and he's like, well, Mary, I see you in my market, but yeah, yeah, but really like, I need to know more. Like I need, why is this, I, I own my own brokers. Why should I come over? And I had to show him and I say, you know, and I, and it took a while for him and for me to understand the values. So that's my two bits. Okay. So I'm going to have another conversation with her next week for sure. Um, at that time, I think what I'll do, if it's okay with, you guys is I, I'm going to start talking about you guys and and maybe we can set up a zoom with her and the other two owners and I'd get Mike on this call I'd get say, hey. Mike on that one I mean she's not a big broker the office has maybe 25 agents and they don't there's only like it doesn't matter real producers it doesn't you know, matter get what's Mike on that style what's her personality style do you know is she a, is she a driver an analytic amiable or, or is she an expressive she's an expressive because Mike is a good expressive. Like I, I call, I call on different people in our group, depending on what style they're like. Brent Conley is really good with numbers, and he's very good on on business minded. So if I have a client, if I have a, if I have somebody I need to have a call with, and they're a numbers person, I know they're analytic. I don't call Mike Bjorkman because Mike's going to be like just like Mike he was today. Sunshades on camping, bro. This is the greatest thing on earth. Yeah. Like, man, like, look at me. I'm out here just camping. And the guy who's analytic is going to be like, who is this guy? Right. Right? I love Mike. I know Mike. But if I have that client, I'm not, if I have that person I'm prospecting, I'm not bringing in Mike Bjorkman unless they're an expressive. I'm going to bring in Brent Conley. Because Brent knows his numbers. And Brent is like, hey, this is why you want to do it. And this is why, and blah, 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 and this and that and this. And he's just connects with that business minded. I'm not saying he's not business, but they're more an analytic type of person. That's a Brent Conley call. So what I do is I try to size up what personality the type they are. And I try to get that person that's a bigger fish that's been a bigger fish than what you have done, bring them in and have that person on the call with them because they'll connect on a better deal. If, if somebody comes like Jesse came, Jesse, I love Jesse. Jesse's very, very like, likes people. He's like amiable almost. I love everybody. Oh, how can I help you? And I'm a driver. I'm like, I don't give a shit. Like, give me the numbers. I want the numbers. Give me the numbers. I don't give a shit about all this hoopy ha la. We're going to have fun. I'm here to make dough, yo. And so, you know, and, and so what happens is you gotta you gotta align the personalities with the person you want to recruit with. Well. So the the three owners are one is you know she's very Mary Sunshine, Disneyland, all that kind of stuff. That's the person I've been talking to, and then the other two are very analytical. So maybe I could get both of those people on the call. I would, I would definitely, and that's up between. I don't know who you know who sponsored who sponsored you. Um, Jesse, and then he gave me to Christine Andreessen. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Our sponsor is Chris, Christine Andreessen. Okay. So I would definitely have Brent Conley and Mike Yorkman on the call. Hands up. And Christine can jump on that too. I mean, she's a great. Yeah. I, I would definitely get her involved. Absolutely. And I was just going to say, so before we run out of time, the, the, the person you just answered that when you're talking to these broker owners and she's you know, the, the Mary Sunshine, who's, um, that's why her question was, I see the value for me, but I don't, what's the value for my agents, right? So to have an easy answer for that, guys, there's four things in the, there you go, you see my four fingers. In the model explained, Brent Gove says there are four pillars why people join EXP. I've heard four pillars, five pillars. I've watched all different videos. These are the four that I usually boil it down to, and I like these four. Leads, 
training, agent ownership in the company, which is stock, and revenue share. So you can say, here's the reasons why your agents would join here, right? It, could, it, and it might be one of these, it might be all four of them, depending on the agent. And what we're gonna do is once you make sure that this is, you know, you know inside and out, this is something that works for you, we will work through and talk to some of your most influential agents first to get them bought in. And then we'll go through and talk to the rest of the people as a group, but there's something in this company for everyone. That's the short elevator answer to, to that question. Okay. Thank you. You guys know those four things, right? Go ahead, Darcy. Uh, Kathy, I would definitely encourage you to talk to Christine okay. about this. Um, okay. I mean, Christine's in my upline. Uh, I think I'm. We're going over to her house tomorrow to hang out and stuff like that. Uh, You're not knocking the walls down today, is that it? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I would definitely talk to her. She's been doing a, an agent attraction mm -hmm. webinar, which has been going really well. She's getting her fingers pretty deep in that. So I would talk to her and strategize because she's been bringing Mike and Brent in periodically also. Um, but I, that's what I would do. Okay. Thank you. Well, is this a useful call today, guys? You get something out of this? Please. All right, good. Absolutely. Anytime we get to see you, Jesse, it's useful. Oh, it's, I'm, I'm not asking that for me. It's not for my, I appreciate that, Darcy. But not for me. I, I got no ego in this. I mean, I, do, I want all of you guys, because most of us were all, actually on the call today, almost everyone were all connected, and I think, but we have people who listen to this from other rev share lines and other groups, like, I don't care what group you're in. I just want all of us to crush it. There is so much opportunity out there. Like, unbelievable. Like, every, once it clicks for you, you start going, oh my goodness. So much opportunity. Ask a question on on revenue share. Yep. Because um, so Lisa um, she just capped, mm -hmm. and um, so she she capped in actually three transactions. Um, her first transaction, um, so um, I earned a um a six six hundred and twenty eight dollars and eighty and sixty eight cents from that transaction. And then the next two, it was 1673.60, but the total is 2302.28, but she's 100% capped. Have all of her deals posted? Yeah. So we'd have to go into EXP World and talk to um, accounting to see, because it should come up to um, 2800. There, yeah. there is, there was the, there is the, so what does it come up to right now? It comes out to 2302.28, but I saw it's supposed so, to come out so to 28. 100 minus 2302, 500, 500 divided by, um, uh, let's see here, 500 divided by 2800, 17, so, so it's 17%, so that there is, there has been the buffer on it the last few months, so my guess is it's the buffer, and there's, right. a, there was a bonus paid on, so did you guys follow the bonus paid and all that stuff, how it worked out last month? Those of you got revenue share, no? Okay, nope. so, all right, so this is, I have two minutes to explain this. Awesome, let's do this. <laughs> For sustainability, people ask us, how is this possible? How can the company possibly give away all the money that comes in? This is the answer. EXP only gives away up to 50% of all revenue that comes into the company. That's sustainability. EXP keeps 50%, they give out 50%. That's the, that's the long term, it's part of our charter, it's written in there, and you guys want that. That's what keeps it sustainable. So for a few months at the beginning of this year, EXP was paying out so much money that they had to put on a buffer where they were holding back part of the revenue share each month until they saw what closed to make sure they weren't paying out more than 50%. So if you look in your revenue share, it broke it down. So it started back, it was a 25% holdback and their plan was to eliminate it as they were increasing income from other places. So by June, which is now, it's, been, it's just about gone away, which is exactly their plan. So I love when the EXP says, here's what we're gonna do, here's the plan. And now, so last month, the holdback was, so on a month that they're not paying out 50% because they only have to pay out 42%, they'll make up the part that they did not pay out in the other months with that 8% extra. Correct. Um, that is, yeah. uh, no, it's, it's on a monthly basis. I think it's hard to, so let, let's, let's use last month, for example. So last month, there was a 16% holdback. And at the end of the month, if you look at your rev share, there was an 11% bonus. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? So they basically held back 5%. That's what the, that's what the XP didn't. So on your 28%, well, let's go into accounting, Susan. Let's, I would talk about that one and that, the specific person to see. But my guess is there was a bonus paid on top of it that's not showing on the line item. I'll, I'll jump on Zoom with you, actually, because we're at the top okay. down here. 
I want to jump in your, your, your enterprise and look on Zoom and see if there's a bonus paid on top because I think it was, because I saw Lisa's closings in there and it should be a little higher than, than what you're showing. So we'll jump into accounting and check it out. Okay, I was just curious because it's the first one I looked at it. So I just was wondering, I'm like, that's weird because it's not 2800. <laughs> so I was, cool. Craig, go crush it. Craig's got our recruiting call. We're going to do it. Okay, uh, thank the, the, you. That's, All the, right. the, that's the answer, Susan. Is Thank that you. Okay. It, right. my guess it has to do with, with the uh, the SRS holdback? So if you want to switch over, I'll shut off the recording, um, and you and me we can jump over to, to Zoom with Jesse. And I want to look at your enterprise for a minute. We can take a look and see in that person. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Bye, All right, guys. Bye. Have a wonderful day. Bye, guys. Bye.